Okay, so the next section we're going to touch on is, and again, we'll need Sebastian for a lot of this, uh, is what is the difference between Cardano SL, the settlement layer, and Cardano CL, the compute layer? There's two different layers there. One of these layers is very relevant to the user or to the average Joe, and the other layer is very relevant to the banking systems and the advancement of technologies. They're both very important. You have to have both of those layers. But currently, the primary layer that's out there that's deployed in the field is Cardano SL, the settlement layer. So uh, do, do one of you guys want to talk about what is the settlement layer? What, what are we actually looking at when we're talking about the settlement layer? So I just want to kind of cover the philosophical argument first. first. Okay, so if you think about Ethereum, which is the most popular uh, cryptocurrency that really uses a computation layer. Let me kind of expand on that. So, so what is a computation layer? It's a, a cryptocurrency that basically supports smart contracts. That's like the simple explanation, right? And so Ethereum is the most popular computation layer. And Ethereum has no settlement layer. It's only a computation layer. There's no way to escape the smart contract functionality. No matter what you're doing, you're exposed to this functionality, right? And the kind of philosophical problem this brings up is imagine you want to use Ethereum to run some sort of computation, right? You want to play CryptoKitties or you want to participate in DAI or some uh, other decentralized system that's running on Ethereum, right? You need to purchase some Ethereum to kind of participate in this computation. Uh, but fundamentally, the price of Ethereum doesn't really relate to you doing this computation. So, right, so you're doing computation and you don't need to buy a thousand dollars of Ether to be able to participate in this computation, right? As long as you have exactly enough money to pay for this crypto kitty, then you're good to go, right? And so you can kind of wonder, what is the value of Ether? If I don't need to, you know, buy a thousand, ten thousand Ether to participate in this real computer, do I really have a reason to do so? Right? Why would I not just only buy the amount I need to participate in the computation when I need to participate in it? Right? And so this is kind of different from the philosophy of Bitcoin, for example, where they say we're a, a settlement layer. This is a place where people can, you know, put all their money in. This is their savings. They don't touch it. And, you know, every now and then when they want to transfer money to somebody, you know, if they want to transfer money, then you make a Bitcoin transaction. So if you want to kind of resolve the philosophical problem, you could say, okay, we're splitting into two layers. Okay. The settlement layer where people put all their money and this is where they have the transactions, the financial transactions. And if you want to play crypto crease or whatever, you only need to transfer as much money as you need to play the game to this other chain and do it, right? And the money on this other chain where you actually run these smart contracts doesn't have an inherent value, right? The money is, or sorry, the value is derived from the settlement layer. Right. And that's kind of the resolution to this uh, philosophical problem of, you know, why would the money on the computation layer have any value if I only need to pay for the cost of running the computation I care about? Okay, Sebastian, thanks for that. You got the philosophical part that you covered here. You covered the technical part of the computation layer and the settlement layer. And what we're doing with this program for the beginners is we're trying to make sure you guys understand uh, what those different layers are and how they affect you, the user of the cryptocurrency. So what we're going to touch on next is the settlement layer. Now, it sounds complex. There's a lot of important software running in the background, but... It's actually quite simple. The settlement layer is how you exchange money. So I have four examples of wallets uh, pulled up. I've got some on the screen behind me. Can you guys see that okay? I wanna make sure I got this. I know people don't like doing live demos, but I personally 
I don't care. I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to do live demos. But one thing I need to be personally and situationally aware of is that we are doing a podcast. Uh, it's also going to be available on audio. Some people are going to be audio only. So when I put stuff up on the screen, I'm going to describe it thoroughly verbally. So what I have up on my display here is I got Daedalus Wallet. You guys can see that okay? Yep. It's All right. small, but I can see it. It's kind of small. I can make it a little bit bigger. Um, I don't have it completely. Uh, anyway, uh, here I have Ada Lite running in a web browser. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open another tab. This is in the Chrome web browser. And I'm going to launch Euroi. I'm logged in here as Deadpool. So I'm going to launch the Deadpool wallet. Wade Wilson. Yep, Deadpool's wallet. There we go. Uh, and so there's three different types of wallets. I have Daedalus. I have uh, Ada Lite, which also connects to the hardware wallet uh, Trezor. However, Lado, Ada Lite runs entirely inside uh, the Chrome web browser. It also runs inside Firefox. And I have a fourth wallet right here on my cell phone called Infinito. All right there. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Infinito Wallet. Okay, and it runs Cardano Ada. So let's start with, uh, since we're talking about the settlement layer, we have about 15 minutes left on the program. Actually, we're down to about 10. How how does Daedalus, I got to remember to turn towards the mic, sorry. <laughs> how is Daedalus related to the settlement layer? Who wants to take a shot yeah, at that one? I mean, so I, I just want to say, I have to be careful when talking about wallets because obviously I work for Mergle, which made Yodoi. And also, I did a lot of the coding for Yodoi also. So I'm super biased on this topic. Uh, so keep in mind uh, this bias whenever I talk about wallets. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah. so, so starting me... with the... Uh, sorry, Philippe, you want to go? But yeah, yes. I can I could say something. I can say All something. Right. So... First of all, if you're not familiar, we're talking about the settlement layer, which is the accounting layer. And what Sebastian was basically saying before, the differences between the Cardano settlement layer, the CSL, and the CCL, the Cardano computational layer, is one is running smart contracts, one is running an accounting. And the reason why they're separated is because sometimes you don't need data if you're running... You may not need the data from an individual transaction if you're running a smart contract and vice versa. There's information going on in different realms of Cardano, and you're not necessarily, it's kind of a waste to know everything when you don't want to know everything. It's computationally expensive and may just slow down the blockchain over time. So what Rick was bringing up was the different wallets. And obviously, Sebastian said before that he works for Emergo, so he has to keep, um, he has to watch what he says about certain wallets. But the Daedalus wallet, for all of those who don't think that Cardano has a working product, is Cardano's working product. It is the official Cardano wallet. You can go on datalistwallet.io and it communicates with the blockchain. So obviously you can see from the screen that uh, Rick has some ADA loaded up onto the Daedalus wallet, and this is part of the settlement layer. So he can receive ADA, he could send ADA, and that address that he has pulled up is going to give him the history of his transactions within this ecosystem. So I could send Rick five ADA right now, and it would show up shortly after in his Daedalus wallet. And this is the official full, this is like a full client or a full wallet. It is processing the entire blockchain. So for those who think that the Daedalus wallet sinks slow, it's because it's processing a lot of transactions, the entire history of the blockchain. But over time, new iterations of Daedalus are going to increase the speed that it takes to sync blocks and basically connect with the blockchain. But for those who are having trouble with Daedalus, they having, they're, they're waiting a long time or they don't have the patience to wait for blocks or maybe they have an old computer or whatever, the minority of people that have, are having issues with Daedalus, they can download a light client. And the main light client, the number one light client is Yodoi. And it was created by Emergo. And basically, it is a Google Chrome extension. So it's not running the entire 
it's it's not as computationally expensive as Daedalus. So as long as you can open up a Chrome tab on your Google, you can communicate with the blockchain. And it is a super light client, so it does communicate with the main blockchain and update the main blockchain. But at the same time, you can use it in a more portable fashion and b b increase the speed, increase decrease the barrier to entry to you to participate within cardano so um i remember rick was saying a couple episodes ago that he was speaking with ruslan and he was saying that you can pull it up on yandex certain browsers on your phone so you can really use your phone now if you know how to navigate through yandex to send transactions and participate within yoroi but you know you can't obviously do that with Daedalus at the moment. But Yodoi is the light version, and Infinito is the Infinito wallet is another derivation of that. So Rick, I don't know if you wanted to take it from here, or Sebastian. You you felt like you needed to say anything from Emergo's side? Yeah, let me hit on a few more points here uh, as it relates to the different types of wallets. Okay, so the first one I had up here, Daedalus. All right. When you install and run Daedalus Wallet, you're actually participating in the protocol. It's a full node. Now, I could pull up processes on here, but I won't do that on this channel. Um, I do it on Digital Fortress where I can edit the security things out of the video. But um, when you run Daedalus, uh, you're running the back end and the front end, but it is the uh, settlement layer. And you can conduct transactions. So the settlement layer, layer is the wallet, and it's how you transfer of value from person to person. The compute layer is the smart contract layer, and it takes care of a lot of the computations. There's a lot of things that can go on in the compute layer. Uh, it's I think it's relatively infinite. Um, Runs some very fancy code on that level. Uh, but the settlement layer is the wallets, and there's different types of wallets. There's thick wallets or heavy clients. There's different words for it. Daedalus is a heavy node, it's a full node, it's a full node wallet. Okay, that's shown there. So when you run it, you're actually, you're providing uh, support to the protocol in the transactions. Currently, not really because it's still centralized as of December 2018, but once it decentralizes, it'll work like the Ethereum nodes and the Ethereum Classic nodes and all the other nodes where uh, it's actually gonna process transactions and participate in the protocol not as a miner but as a wallet like emerald wallet for ethereum classic and the mist wallet for ethereum those are actually full nodes same as daedalus it's a full node wallet and it takes care of transactions uh the other types of wallets i've got one on my phone okay it's a light client it runs as an app it does not run in a specific web browser it might use web browser like technologies some of them do some of them don't Okay, so there's two different types. You got the cell phone, which is like the uh, very lightweight version. You got the full node Daedalus. I've got two others here, Yoroi. Now, Yoroi is a plugin. So there's actually processing, computation, and private keys stored inside the uh, Chrome web browser uh, with Yoroi. And let, if I get that wrong, Sebastian, correct me, but it does store your, your private keys in a secure environment and it's been security checked. We touched on that on episode two uh, with uh, Nicolas. Um, he talked about that. And uh, the Ada Light wallet, now the Ada Light wallet, I don't completely understand the technology, but it runs entirely inside the web browser. So to pull it up, I did not have to install a plugin uh, to launch it. You could go to the web page and you can put in a, 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 a 12 word seed or you can put in a private key. You can enter that in a web browser. Some people don't like doing that for security purposes, but the nice thing about the Ada Light Wallet is it interfaces with the Trezor. So if you, if I were to plug in a Trezor and launch, the, there's another option here on Ada Light uh, when you log in. Uh, you could select Hardware Wallet, and then you connect the Trezor, and that way the private key stays on there and it communicates. But this is probably one of the lightest clients where it's, contained entirely in the web browser, no plugin. And uh, when you close it, when you close out the web browser, basically all the information that was cached in there kind of uh, disappears or something, something happens to it. But it's completely gone until you go back to the website. So there's uh, there are four basic types, full node, 
you got plugins, you got the, they run entirely inside the web browser, and you got ones that run on mobile devices. Uh, and that takes, that's, that covers your settlement layer kind of stuff. Anything about the contract layer or the, the compute layer? I, I said it wrong. CL stands for the compute layer. Uh, did I cover the settlement layer pretty good? And any comments on the compute layer? Anything that should be added to that for the, how does it help your grandma buy groceries at the grocery store? <laughs> yeah, if I can say it. So the way it would work in the future is the settlement stair is where we would store all your money. The settlement is where is the settlement layer is where you would stake and all this kind of stuff. The competition layer will be accessible through your wallet, but it'd be kind of a layer that you only interact with when you need to. Right? So if you see some DAP running on Cardano you want to interact with, you send as much money as you need to to your competition layer, like a sub wallet I guess. And interact with the smart contracts, and then when you're done, if you have any ADA left over, you send it back to the settlement layer. So that's kind of how it would work in theory. So when you'd open up your wallet, like Daedalus or Yoroi, it would open up with the settlement layer, right? And you'd have some sort of portal inside the wallet where you can convert your ADA to computation layer ADA. And once you've converted your ADA to computation layer ADA, then you can interact with smart contracts, and then when you're done, you could come back. So that's kind of how it'll work in, in a high level.